Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the add table from examples option when you're getting data from the web using Power BI Desktop. Okay, get data from web. That's old school. Remember when Power BI Desktop first came out, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was demonstrating it. But then they took it from the next level because every web page doesn't have a table on it and they want you to kind of tell it what you want, provide an example, and then it can build a table based on your examples. And so I hadn't done much with it until my buddy Will Reynolds, Will posted on Twitter, he's like, hey, the web page um, from getting data from the web page using Power BI Desktop is just absolutely kick right? And I love it. But what I'd like to do is, let's say I have multiple URLs, right? With all the same, same HTML behind it, like a blog page, right? The blog page, each blog typically has the same template. Um, and I wanted to extract some data out from a list of URLs. How do you do it? And I was like, whew, got an idea. Send me some URLs. And of course, Will sent me some URLs with some links to his blog and I built something out. So the first thing, wait, 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 wait. You guys know how I like to do. Instead of all this talking, head over to my laptop. Okay. So um, I created, they send me a table with a list of URLs. I populated those into my desktop. I'm in the query editor, by the way. Um, and then I created a parameter. I'm gonna use this parameter. Hang on, you'll see how I use this parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL. I defaulted it to a URL. And then what I'm gonna do is choose new source. If you're in the, you know, in Power BI, the reporting area, you choose get data and then choose web. Either way, works the same way. Put that URL in and click okay. Once you click OK, Power BI is going to do some work on that web page. Depending on the responsiveness of the web page or your internet connectivity, it could be slow. I'm not sure my kids are home today. They're playing Xbox and streaming YouTube. So it may, may be a little slow, uh, but we'll see. Right? And if it takes too long, Adam will just cut it out. It'll be like the magic, magic of YouTube. It happens like that. Oh, but she was. Why are you so slow? The navigator window was gonna open up and I got nothing, right? I was so excited. I see document, I could choose document, but this is not what I want. But if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see where it says add table using examples. Maybe some of you know about this, maybe you don't. If not, go read the doc on it, it's great. Click add table using examples. Another window is gonna open up. At the top of the window will be a preview of the web page, and at the bottom, is the table that we're gonna create based on the examples we provide. So it's pretty, pretty obvious what they want us to do. All right, so there we go, it's nice. So the first thing we wanna do is get the author. So I'm gonna give the name of the column author, and his name is Kevin Rudder. If I just click here in the first cell, you see it shows all the data on that page. But when I start typing, it filters it down to just what contains what I type. And then the next thing I wanna get is the title, right? So the title of this blog is how to take blah, 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 right? How to take A-B testing. Excellent. Really nice. Then I want to get the date, which is January 28th, right? And then I want to get the category date. And you're going, Patrick, why don't you just get the category? Hang on, hang on. I'm going to show you why, right? Cat, if I can learn how to type, category date. Right, use experience, there we go, and the date. And then I'm just gonna get the category. Why are you doing it again, Patrick? Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's coming to show you, show you why, show you why. Use experience, right? Okay, so this is the table we want. Not quite, but close enough, right? Because we have to do a little massaging. We'll get intimate with the data in a few minutes, all right? So you click okay, and then you'll see two options, you'll see your document and now you'll see your custom table. If you click your custom table, there's the data and I click okay, all right? Once I click okay, it's gonna go out and create my process the query and then land that query in the query editor for me. So here, this is it. So I'm excited about this and I can see the information. So what I wanna do now, because I wanna go, you know, traverse a list of URLs, I'm gonna make create a function, all right? So to create a function, you need to create a parameter. I've created my parameter. I'm gonna go into the advanced editor and whatever that URL, you can see that URL is hard coded right here. I'm gonna replace it with my function, okay? So if you just type B or whatever you use, IntelliSense will kick in. So you can see IntelliSense right there. Make sure you don't have any errors and I click done, all right? So nothing really happens, but when I right click on it, now that I've added the parameter to it, 
the create function option is enabled. I choose create function, call it blog details. All right, blog details, this is great, right? So now I have my blog details, which has three queries in it. I have my function, I have my parameter, and it moved my parameter, that's okay. And I have the original query that I pulled in. So now I wanna test this, right? So I'm gonna to go to the URLs. Before I do too much work, I'm gonna grab this one about Power BI, copy it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my function, paste the URL in to the box, the input, and click invoke. Once I click invoke, I can see that it pulled everything but the category. This is why I did category date. So why didn't it pull category? Well, check this out, right? If we go back to the original query right here and go to advanced editor, and this is important. So if you start using this and you see something like this in your query, so check it out. So you can see how author is tagged, title is tagged, date is tagged, um, and it's you know using specific locations on the page that it can identify across those pages all the way until I get to the category and it's like some stuff with the URL hard coded don't know what it really is um, and that's the problem okay so if you start doing web from examples you go to the advanced editor and you see something like this it's not gonna quite work if you're trying to go against multiple web pages okay and so my my guess is and I'm no HTML developer or expert and I haven't confirmed this with the product team I probably should um, but I think you got to go to the whole line you remember the category was at the beginning and the date was at the end and they were separated by a dot and so it pulled the date because the date was at the end of the line but the category i pulled it at the middle and it kind of broke right so i'm guessing that's why it's like that but i'm not 100 percent sure but anyway to correct this right we just choose done and what we're going to do is go back to the original query right i'm going to go view i'm going to open up the query steps here and then you can see right here i'm going to click this it's going to open up the page and all I'm gonna do is delete this. I'm just gonna delete this column, right? Let's delete it. Everything's breaking. It's like, oh no, no. That's because the next step, it's referencing that. If I go into the advanced editor and just remove it, right? Remove that category from my code right here in the last step. You see that last step right there, right? Change type, just gonna get rid of it. Right, make sure everything's right. Click done. And now all is right with the world, right? Except, right, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this, because I don't want the invoke there. I'm going to just kind of clean up my data a little bit. And now I have nice, pretty data. My function should have followed suit, right? All the stuff I did on that one, all right, saying, hey, you're gonna disconnect, but I did everything I wanna do. You can see it added everything, right? So as I was modifying that query, the function and the original query are completely connected. So everything I was doing to that source query was being affected by my function, which is great. Um, and so I don't have to worry about going back. I just disconnected them by going into advanced mode, but that's okay. So now the last thing that you need to do, because this is a function and I have a table with my URLs in it, right is just go to add column invoke a function right choose my function name i'm going to pass in i'm going to input all those urls click ok it gives me a table you see it says table and i have those two little arrows pointing out expand it out uncheck this because you don't want it to be blog details dot author blog details dot title right we don't want that if we just click ok bam there's all of our data just pulled it in this is great i can start analyzing i can see who's blogging the most on what day so do we release the most blogs things like that this is great right so i will gave me a big hats off in twitter so i'm hoping you know this helps someone out there i'm curious have you guys ran into this before have you solved this a different way you know what to do questions comments post it in the comments below if it's your first time visiting a guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button if you like my video big thumbs up as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. You'll cut it. You'll just go.